Loga Offer, Solicitor at the Centre for Women's Justice. Well, I'm here to speak about the police super complaint that we lodged uh, and I was the author of in March 2019, which was about failings that we saw right across the country in the way that various different protection orders actually work in practice on the ground. Um, and probably one of the first types of concerns that we were hearing from frontline domestic abuse services is around enforcement of non molestation orders. Uh, we think there is a, really, a, a real systemic problem in non-molestation orders breaches not being um, acted on. So obviously the starting point for that is for the information to be recorded on police systems so that officers can quickly and easily identify which orders are in place. So if that um, system can be rolled out nationally, I think that would be a really important first step to getting a sort of quicker and better responses. I think it's really important for different organisations involved both nationally and locally to know what each other are doing. And obviously the pilot in North Yorkshire um, is one that could make a difference everywhere. I don't think there's anything specific to North Yorkshire. We have the same problems all over the country in terms of the, the systems in place. So if it can help to roll that the, the, the pilot out nationally, then that's important. I'm Andy Cook, I'm a Magistrate's Inspector, Constabulary and Fire and Rescue Services. I'm here on behalf of HMI uh, to talk about the super complaint uh, that was submitted by the Centre for Women's Justice, uh, which we responded to in August uh, of this year, and which forces are required and governments and MOJ are required to respond to by next March, uh, in relation to how uh, particularly non-molestation orders are dealt with by policing, by the courts, and what more we need to do to get that whole system more effective to prevent people sadly dying. I think a greater understanding of the requirements of why we need to do what we're doing here, which is coming together to make sure that everyone understands what their role is, to understand what their responsibilities are, to hopefully help organisations to work closer together uh, in preparation of non-molestation orders and similar orders to ensure that the people who were trying to keep safe, those who are most vulnerable, are kept safe. I, I think Project serves a really good initiative, really good innovation, and the work that's been done by North Yorkshire Police, I, I fully commend. Uh, we need to make sure that we do have that database where people know exactly what these orders are all about, what they exactly say, and we need to make sure those orders are specific to ensure we can use them to protect those who need our help at the most vulnerable times. And it's responsibility of not just HMI CFRS, of NPCC, of the Domestic Abuse Commissioner, of everyone working together as a whole system to make sure forces and other agencies, it's not just about policing, forces and other agencies are doing the right thing to keep people safe. Chief Constable Lisa Winwood. So we're really privileged as an organisation here at North Yorkshire Police to have been involved in Project Shield, which is a pilot looking at non-molestation orders and ensuring that we can prevent people from coming to harm from domestic abuse. So we deal with victims of crime and domestic abuse every single day. And when they call us for help, it's really important that we deliver that exemplary response, that we deliver a service that makes them feel safe, that we address those issues, that we pick up any criminal offences, and that we act to make sure that that person doesn't come to harm again. However, wouldn't it be lovely if we didn't need to take that call for service? Because the actions that we take as a result of knowing about non-molestation orders, for example, means we can act before that person comes to harm. So prevention is so important. If somebody's harmed, they're harmed forever. So even though we can deliver that best possible service, it still touches their life forever. If we can prevent that harm in the first place and they can have a better quality of life and live without that fear or, or harm that's, that's currently affected their life. I mean, it's down to the hard work and determination of those who work in safeguarding and in the world of domestic abuse here in North Yorkshire have really picked up the mantle with this. And it is a partnership effort. And I can't thank CGI, our partners in the courts, partners in IDAS, 
and local authorities, all those that work in that domestic abuse environment have really come on board to look at the partnership shared endeavour solution uh, to preventing people from coming to harm as a result of better intelligence, better use of our computer systems for the information around non-molestation orders through the courts to help those victims get that best possible service from all of those agencies. I mean, this is such an important subject. We've heard all about violence against women and girls more recently. Uh, domestic abuse is so harmful, not only uh, to the individual victims, but to their families. There are often children involved. And of course, the whole picture with tackling perpetrator behaviour. It's a much wider issue, so it's so encouraging to be here today to share some of that work across the partnership all with a real shared endeavour to prevent future harm and make that system work for victims of domestic abuse. Uh, Julia Mulligan, Chair of the Board of Trustees for IDAS. So um, about a year ago, um, IDAS started working on, on a pilot called Project Shield. We'd recognised that there was an issue with NMOs um, and really wanted to try uh, and improve the service to victims and survivors of domestic abuse um, so that it felt better protected. I think the big thing that's come out of today for me is the sort of willingness of all of the partners sat around the table to really sort of roll up their sleeves and try and find, well, understand the problem in the first instance and have a proper conversation about it, but then try and find the solutions. Uh, and, you know, we have to look at the potential for that, not just here in North Yorkshire, but more broadly uh, across the country. And that is really, really exciting. And it's great to see IDAS and North Yorkshire Police, you know, be at the forefront of all of this. What we'd really like to see is, is the results of this pilot replicated across the, uh, across the country. That's quite uh, complex, partly because of all the manual processes that were involved in, in the work that we did here, and that means it's really difficult to replicate. But we've got to try and get a coalition of the willing together to try and really try and encourage other forces and other um, uh, providers like IDAS um, to support victims in this way. Superintendent of North Yorkshire Police, Head of Safeguarding. North Yorkshire Police have been a key stakeholder uh, in Project Shield. Uh, we've used our domestic abuse teams, using the information that they've got and the challenges that they've had around non station orders, to work with IDAS, our partners for domestic abuse, work with CGI and the technical solutions that they'll then be able to uh, deliver in support of a solution of how we receive, manage, and respond to victims who've applied for normal station orders. It's really important that the most vulnerable people who are uh, victims, or perhaps victims in their own homes, are supported by us. Not just by us, but IDAS and the other services that are available. So if we can't protect them, which is what we're here for as public servants, is what I'm here for as the head of safeguarding the domestic abuse lead for the force, we need, we need to do that. In relation to today, we've looked at who do we need? Who do we need in this room today at the seminar to be able to make a difference? Who do we need to be able to resolve some of those continued issues of our station orders and have them managed? Uh, and we've looked at all our agencies, uh, sub-agencies, when we look at the home offices and the different departments, uh, and we've put that call out to them. We've given, uh, sent out invites to key individuals and the responses from all teams have been phenomenal. And I think that reinforces the national commitment and those agencies that we've been working with to move forward and resolve these issues that we've seen around non station orders that are featured in so many reports. Yeah, my name's uh, Martin Jebb. I'm a director within CGI and I look after our public safety side of the business. Uh, supporting UK policing. CGI started to engage with uh, the domestic abuse side on the non station orders um, 12 months ago with North Yorkshire Police. Um, we were asked to go and help North Yorkshire Police um, improve the way non station orders worked and that was on the back of a uh, report that CGI published calling Joining the Dots where 
we were concerned that there was preventative measures that could help domestic abuse but weren't really as effective as they could be. When, when we landed in North Yorkshire Police to support uh, the Project Shield pilot, um, the first thing that we did is listen. Uh, and listening was about understanding the frustrations of the practitioners and the problems that they had in protecting victims of these sorts of crimes. So after listening, uh, together with the practitioners, we made a list of things that we think they needed, uh, which they agreed with, um, things such as um, the ability to place all the non station orders and the proof of service in one place, um, create a register of non station orders, be able to place those non station orders on the Police National Database maps, uh, and also link the details within the orders into existing UK intelligence so that when you do search for a non-molestation order you get the richness of the intelligence back and it's there visible on the screen to help uh, police officers and staff make effective decisions. So the, the, the actual Project Shield in my view was a resounding success for North Yorkshire Police and for victims of domestic abuse. Um, there is no reason why Project Shield can't be replicated right across the UK. And I think that one of the biggest challenges we have is the local courts issue a local non molestation order. It's then handed over to the local police. But where you get the problems is the non molestation order is effective nationally and there is no national sharing of the information that the police need to protect victims. So I think that it is possible for everybody to work in partnership and deliver a solution for non molestation orders and other orders to protect people right across the UK. And I think if the willingness was there, this is actually achievable. One of the success stories that's come out of the Project Shield pilot, in, in my personal view, is, is the way that we work the partnership in pilot. So the focus was always on the protection of people who've been subject to domestic abuse incidents and also using the non molestation orders as they should be used to protect people and also keep offenders under control. Um, the, the only real reason that this pilot worked is the partnership that we have with the courts, the police, the charities and other agencies together with CGI. And we have such knowledgeable and passionate uh, people on this team that there was a huge willingness to learn new things, do things a different way and change the business processes so that we can safeguard the public. And uh, for me, that is the key thing. If we could have a project team that we had in North Yorkshire nationally, this would be a massive success. I'm Claire Crossan and I'm the Domestic Abuse and Stalking Inspector for North Yorkshire Police. So in April 2021, we commenced the pilot um, in partnership with CGI and HMCTS and IDAS around improving our response to non molestation orders and the recording of the data so that we can uh, access it more readily and better protect victims and survivors of domestic abuse. So we've better been able to safeguard victims by making proactive contact with them upon completion uh, and notification of an order. We now contact that victim, we have those um, initial safeguarding discussions as to how we can um, gather information about any potential breaches, um, do some safety planning with them and reassure them that the police know about their order and that we're here for them if, uh, if indeed there is a breach in future and that's yielded some really positive results um, within the domestic abuse team. So there's a number of benefits that will come and have come from this pilot so far. There's that proactive early intervention and prevention that we can now undertake um, by better utilising our already existing police systems and we are now notified um, automatically without having to put resource into it when there's an incident involving someone who's involved as an applicant or a respondent or an address relating to a non molestation order. We can contact that, that victim, we can work out what's happening in their life and if they need any further support from us or external agencies. Um, important benefit that officers on the ground when they have those breaches reported to them can crucially access that information when they need it, where they need it and um, have the points to prove to prosecute a case. Today is the culmination of a lot of hard work um, for our Project Shield team. It's to really um, demonstrate the benefits that we've seen locally as a result of the pilot, but with a real um, focus on the fact that we want to make this a national approach and for it to work fully effectively and really safeguard victims on a national scale. We have to get that buy-in from our, our senior partners and our senior leaders that we've managed to um, 
secure the attendance here today. So it's just trying to get that really important message across about how we can do this, um, the fact that it can be upscaled and the real difference that it can make to victims nationally. Um, and we can replicate the benefits that we've seen for people in North Yorkshire. It's the right thing to do. I think it's something that can be upscaled and replicated and those benefits seen nationally. Um, I don't think there's a lack of will from other forces by any stretch. I think it's just about demonstrating the how we do it. We're all on the same page that we want to improve this. And there's wide acknowledgement from HMI, CFRS, from, from the Centre for Women's Justice, from IDAS, from ourselves, that this isn't a system that's working right now. Um, and, but we're giving a blueprint, if you like, as to how we can really make it work a lot better and by demonstrating some of the benefits that we've seen locally.